didn't realize I punched the button. So, uh, I'm back uh, after lunch or during lunch to try to make another presentation. The wind was blowing this morning. I'm going to try to only speak to three people today because I think it's useless speaking to uh, the SEC or FINRA. Uh, I don't think FINRA is ever going to do anything. It's a self-regulatory body and uh, takes no interest. But FINRA, if you're listening, you should look into Alpine, the prime brokerage Alpine. Uh, I've read the rest of their title, but it's Alpine Prime Brokerage. I think they're in cahoots with these guys here. You should also look into uh, Kurt Kramer acting as a unregistered securities dealer. And then you should look into all the dozen, maybe even 20 market makers that are trading in GTII and then FNGR and then in hundreds of other stocks on behalf of naked short sellers who sell stock that do not exist. Um, I've already, I, I hope uh, Mr. Grewal listens. Uh, I think he may be the only hope for an honest uh, man at, at, at the SEC. But I wanna speak to the Longs in GTII, and I wanna speak to Maria, uh, Mark to Romo. I apologize. I have a hard last name to pronounce as well. I mean no disrespect. And I, I also would like to speak to Melissa Lee. Um, there are other uh, reporters that have been in on this story, but they haven't done anything with it. I just want to point out to you, here's the criminals in front of uh, the SEC. Charlie Mayo, Kurt Kramer, Seth Kramer, and then the lawyer is a very important part of it, uh, Richard Nadich. I want to also point out quickly that everything I say here is my own opinion, and it's in my own judgment, uh, and it's not financial advice. Gary Gensler asked for a level playing field, and he says he wants a level playing field, but he does nothing to solve this problem. Zip. Why? Because Goldman Sachs makes a lot of its income in uh, uh, the stock loan department. So Goldman Sachs has a vested interest in lending out shares, whether they exist or don't exist. This gentleman might be the only help, or Bal uh, Grewal might be the only honest man at the SEC who might be able to help here, and I hope he has an opportunity to look into this. It's a bus pump. But here's Finger, 103 million shares naked short in the last fortnight. Uh, Maria and Michelle, what's going on here, I'll get to GTII, but in Finger, they have a 13 million share market, mark, public float. Of that 13 million shares, approximately, I'd say seven or eight million are held very closely by investors, many offshore in paper form. So the actual public float of shares that are available are three to four million, roughly. I'm giving you rough numbers. In the span of a fortnight, Lind, uh, whatever, you can look at the name here. It's not, I don't want to make a mistake because there's another L-I-N-D out of Chicago. It's not those guys. But L-I-N-D uh, sold not over 90 million shares that do not exist under the reg show exemption, but they sold shares short, naked, that do not exist. Now, Maria and Melissa, you have to get out of your head this idea that's brainwashed into hum Americans that somehow short selling is a cleansing process and that short selling saves us from uh, CEOs who pump and dump. This is dump, 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 dump. There is no pump involved, it's just dump. When there's good news, they dump. When it's bad news, they dump. When the stock goes up, they dump. As long as the stock is going down, they dump. They just sell shares that do not exist. 
Now, uh, GTII, Kurt Kramer, has sold uh, over 50 million shares that do not exist, never will exist, in the last three weeks because the stock went up. And, and you got to understand how unfair this is to retail investors. Retail investors make their due diligence, make their investment, and then they decide that they're going to commit. But they can only buy one time with their dollar. These guys, now I'm not pointing at Gary, I'm, ta I'm talking about Kurt Kramer. He can sell a stock that doesn't exist. He can sell a stock that doesn't exist once. He can sell a stock that doesn't exist twice. He can sell a stock that doesn't exist three times, four times, a hundred times. He can sell, as he just did, 52 million uh, shares that do not exist. He sold in the last 20 trading days. Prior to that, he had sold at least 150 million shares that do not exist. And, and guys, everyone listening, and Maria and Michelle, these are not shares that ever will exist in GTII. They never will exist. Okay, how is it done, Maria? There's only four tickets in the United States if you're on the financial side of the business. Four tickets. One is to buy. You have to pay cash at settlement. Two is to sell stock that's in your account. Three is to sell stock short that you locate, that you borrow, that actually you've entered into a contract to borrow. And the fourth is the reg show exemption that the geniuses at SEC created. It, the, the reg show exemption helps only the brokerage business. It does not help and the criminals. It does, I'm not pointing at Gary Gensler, I'm pointing at uh, uh, Kurt Mayo. Uh, Charlie Mayo, uh, Kurt Kramer, and Seth Kramer, and then his lawyer and the rest of the cabal. They, they, under the exemption of Reg Show, Goldman Sachs created a button, and I think it's in one of the movies, Margin Call or, or uh, The Big Short, one of those. They created a button that all you have to do is hit it that says, well, we did a reasonably, yeah, we, we feel comfortable, we looked a bit, we kind of feel like sort of we're gonna find the shares. And that's all the market maker needs. Well, why in a time of computerized systems do we need all these shady market makers? Why do we need that button? Because companies like Goldman Sachs and then all the, all the, uh, hedge funds that they finance and they accept business from want to look the other way because it creates assets under management, it creates commissions, it creates fees, and it creates uh, uh, interest earned on the, in the stock loan department. Here are the criminals. So Maria and Melissa, what's hard to understand because you can't get it, and, and I'm not judging you, and it's not because you're a woman and I'm a man, as someone asked me on the phone the other day. It's just simply, it's beyond belief that this goes on. I talked to my friends that and still in the brokerage business. They can't believe it. Guys like Gary Gensler allow this to happen. And they talk. Gary talks, like I'm doing right now. But Gary talks, so this guy might be the hope. And nothing happens. Why? Because there's so much money in it. What One thing that happens at uh, Maria and Melissa is companies like Merrill Lynch, they don't allow their brokers to buy stocks under $5. No research. And in fact, if you transfer in stock under $5, it, often they tell you to sell it. Guess where the money goes? Goes in pools of managed money, assets under money, management, earning one or two or three percent. And then the hedge funds make two percent per annum and 20 percent of the profits because they're they're so smart. But then they can't get the rates of returns unless they juice their returns with uh, obviously access to IPOs, but also with this kind of uh, arm's length fraud going on. So anyway, uh, what I'm asking you, Maria and Melissa, to look at is that they, these guys, in the case of Lind, L-I-N-D, 
they sold almost 100 million shares that do not exist. They, they, they just aren't there. But it's allowed, this kind of selling is allowed by Gary Gensler. He does nothing. And in the case of GTII, they've sold almost 200 million shares that don't exist, never will exist. There isn't a contract to, to create them. And Gary Gensler does nothing. But he talks about having a level playing field. Well, the only way to level this up would be allow longs to buy shares and promise to pay in 35 days. Oh yeah, we'll send the money. Oh, my dog ate it. Uh, I'll get it next month. Let's move the trade around from Merrill Lynch to, to Goldman Sachs to Morgan Stanley over the next few months while we, while we juggle whether we're going to settle. That's the only way is to let retail do that kind of shenanigan. It's the only way to level the playing field under Gary Gensler because he's not going to do anything. And FINRA down over on K Street is useless. Uh, absolutely useless. So let me ask you something, Maria and Melissa. A lot of the longs on this uh, video bought shares in, in stock of GTII and Finger. And by the way, if you think I'm here to promote just two stocks, that's not the case. He might be leaving now. He might be leaving because he's been asking. But what a good job he's done. Um, we're in front of the SEC, and uh, I'll try to finish this up pretty quickly since maybe he's under pressure to go. But Maria and Melissa, let me ask you something. The buyers of those certificates put the cash up at settlement. What do they have in their account? Everyone that bought 50 million shares of, of GTII, whether it's a good stock or not stock, I'm not arguing that. What did that, what's in their account? <laughs> what's in their account? What, in the case of Finger, 90 million shares. What is in the, the cash paying investor from the United States of America, mostly? What's in their account? How can this be justified? I don't know where to look. I apologize, I'm, <laughs> the wind is blowing. Okay, so that's one question uh, for you guys. The second question is, why doesn't uh, the SEC stop all this? I mean, that's the biggest question I have is, got, oh, they wouldn't let that happen. Well, they do let it happen. So why don't you um, cover it? The risk to the system is ma uh, massive. Um, Imagine if these shares are covered and out and for GTII and Alpine, Alpine Prime Brokerage goes bust. And then it ripples into other prime brokers in 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 billion dollars. Who are they going to blame? They're going to try to blame Bernie Brothers or, or whatever, what do they call it? Reddit, Reddit Brothers or meme stocks. It's not that. It's because the SEC stopped doing its job. I saw Gary Gensler complain that he only has 4,500 people working for him at the SEC. Maria, Melissa, go on to GTI at Twitter. There's a guy named Ham at shortkiller.com or, you know, Twitter at Twitter. He's been doing this for 23 years, fighting the shorts. He is literally got the case for GTII and Finger wrapped up in a bow. You guys could put, get him on the phone, interview him for half an hour, and you'd know more than these regulatory bodies know about Kurt Kramer and Seth Kramer and the crimes they've committed. Uh, uh, everything I'm saying here is my opinion in my judgment. Uh, I assume that when someone breaks the law, they're uh, committing a crime. I assume that someone committing a crime is a criminal. Those are my those are my understanding of those words. Um, let me see what else I wanted to tell you. Uh, I think this is a systemic risk to the financial system, Maria and Melissa. And I think if one of you actually, I'm available, but I'm not promoting myself. I would talk to him, and there's a couple of other people on the GTI, on the uh, Twitter, who 
this is starting to blow, so let me just stand closer so I can hold it. Um, uh, I think you could wrap this up in one or two interviews. Melissa, you had a lawyer on your on your call several times. They used to work in in uh, in uh, enforcement at the SEC. He says these are these are too complicated, take too many years, because I guess everyone at the SEC just wants to solve a problem quickly, small slap on the wrist, and then go get a job at Citadel or SAC or Goldman Sachs. Well, guy, guy, people, we can't keep doing this. The financial systems can't keep being abused this way. Anyway, if you get in touch with Ham, uh, GTII is something that even the SEC could solve in 30 days and have a case. Um, what else should I tell you about what they do? Uh, you know, the system is so devious. They, they sell stock that doesn't exist, they short it. Then they get on and tell you that they're doing a good judgment with their crack research teams, that somehow they know that when investors invest in these two stocks, that LIND or Kirk Kramer know what, what's better to do with that money. And it's not just these two stocks, Maria and Melissa. I raise money for a lot of companies and in all industries. I've watched short sellers destroy industry after industry, company after company, take entire market caps of companies. And, it's, and, it, and it destroys the strength of America. All right, I just wanna say a quick thing to the longs, particularly in GTII. Um, but but all, I, I, you know, also in, in FNGR. This was a bear raid, it was illegal, it was wash trading, it was uh, spoofing, and it was manipulated. They communicate with each other, the market makers, these criminal market makers. They either should know or do know what they're doing. Um, in the case of GTII, it's all orchestrated by Kurt Kramer. And the SEC does nothing. So that's why Maria and Melissa, I, I turn to you and pray that you can at, at least look into this. It's much bigger than the bumper sticker responses of, well, short selling is good for markets. It protects people. No, it's robbing. It's robbing entire uh, uh, industries and companies. And do you think that when the big brokerage firms don't let allow buying in stocks under $5, that it's not like shooting fish in the barrel? Uh, one other thing I want to bring out, Maria and Melissa, is under under uh, the current government that we have. Wait, I'm not criticizing it. There's a belief that that uh, businesses, LLCs, barbershops, restaurants, uh, 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 transportation companies aren't paying enough tax. Well, these SOBs. Have, have and and more of their ilk, have sold trillions of shares that don't exist, driving stocks down to zero, which means companies don't have their own own shares to acquire other companies, to qu acquire uh, assets, to acquire employees, to grow. They have a vision, but they don't have their own stock as currency. Well, what happens? The companies go down into zombie land. They either get kicked off the exchange, they go, they might go bankrupt, but there's no closing transaction. There's no 1099. So if you need an issue to go on your news stories with, how about the fact that these guys don't pay any taxes on trillions probably over the two decades? Probably trillions of dollars that they've sucked out of the system certainly hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. All right, so on the longs on, on both of these, these were bear rates yesterday. They're selling stock that doesn't exist. Uh, nobody quite understands it. That's how they got away with it. SEC does nothing. Um, SEC 
has to look, everybody here wants a job with the big, with the big brokerage firms. So, um, uh, they don't regulate that hard. And I don't know how to get people to change that behavior. But anyway, in the case, specifically in the case of GTII, I really want you to encourage you, I'm not telling you what to do, but the company has announced they're going to issue a warrant. So there's a reason to hold on if it fits your strategy uh, to the X date for that warrant. They have announced in the past, and they have worked very aggressively on issuing uh, a special dividend in the form of a crypto dividend, which is outside the SEC complicated, you know, just just post uh, the button tree uh, technology, while the rest of us in the world are in this nanosecond computer technology, the SEC still operates as if physical certificates have to be biked across the uh, city to settle a trade. Uh, anyway, they're working on that, and and I don't know when they'll get it done, but I think I, it's been announced that they're continuing to work on it. They did find an anomaly in the share count that they sent to FINRA. We might find out about that. So this bear raid won't last. And, and I think you'll see a snap back in, in stock prices. So it's 21 minutes. Um, I'm, I'm afraid this is gonna blow over because of the wind and it's freezing cold out here. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else Maria and Melissa should know. I don't wanna waste more of their time. It's just, this is a massive corruption that's gone on for two decades and it's really bad now. It's not just these two stocks, it's company after company after company after company. And I don't know how, when you destroy economic engines, um, such as small companies that grow into big ones, I don't know how America has an economic future. So I, I couldn't imagine a bigger story on for um, uh, you, Maria, and you, Melissa. Um, I'm sure I'll think of something else I should have said. I appreciate that you listened if you did. And uh, Long's hang in there. I think this guy is going to be our, is going to be our Elliot Ness. He's an honest, hardworking man and he's out to level the playing field and enforce the rules. Okay, 23 minutes. Cheers. It's freezing cold. <laughs> Bye.